Hello, everybody, and welcome back to episode 12 of the Hangar Talk podcast. Today, we sat down with airshow performer Adam Baker to discuss all things aviation related, including his flying career, his aerobatic, his aerobatic routine, and much, much more. Coming up on this, this week's episode of the Hangar Talk podcast, it's Adam Baker and Adam Baker Air Shows. We hope you guys enjoy it, and we'll talk to you on the backhand. Hello, Adam, and welcome hey. to Hangar Talk. Hey, how are you, Braden? I'm doing good, sir. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. That's awesome. So, how you doing? Life's good. I'm uh, gonna go do some hiking today and enjoy some uh, nature. What about you? Nice. Uh, it's uh, Friday, so it's the Angels baseball home opener game today at six thirty-eight. So, um, I'm actually under the flyover path. I got a flyover last year for it. So hopefully willing to see some cool stuff nice yeah so let's start with you sir how did you get into aviation sure um you know when i was a a younger guy um in high school uh aviation wasn't really on my my radar um i was mowing lawns at the time to uh to make make some extra money to uh go to the movies and things like that and um my mother told me to go to Oklahoma State for a year, see if I liked it after high school, and I, I tried it out, and then she got me a uh, a discovery flight at Oklahoma State, and it's kind of one of those things, um, you do it once, and, and you absolutely love it, or you hate it, I absolutely loved it, and uh, didn't look back from there, and have enjoyed the path. That's awesome, man, and so have I. Yeah. So I, um, I actually, my first air show was um, when I was one year old uh, here in San Diego, California at MCS Miramar. Oh, what a great show for your first show. Yep. Uh, well, I was one years old in 2009, so it was really great. I'm actually sitting here visiting uh, some family right now, so. Nice. I don't live out here. I live kind of, kind of a hundred miles past that way. Sure. Uh, what's the flyover this year uh, for the Angels game? Bison Aviation. La- uh, last year was F-15s. I don't know if it was um, – I don't know what it is this year. So, hopefully, uh, I think it's a surprise. So, yeah, I'm excited for that. that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I don't know what the flyover is. Uh, I'll have to wait and see. Yeah. So, next question is, so how do you prepare for – for the air show season sure um so at the end of the last season we usually take our airplanes apart spend a good amount of time inspecting um we don't let our airplanes get anywhere near tolerances that maybe other airplanes that don't get worked as hard get to um so if it needs new parts we we uh we replace them at the earliest signs of wear um so that's really the first step is is getting the aircraft prepared. Um, and then in winter, <clears throat> with your airplane down, um, if you're not flying a lot of aerobatics, then your G-tolerance drops off. So uh, throughout the winter, I work out um, pretty heavily uh, just to stay in shape. Um, then in January and February, when the airplane's back together, uh, we go out and uh, we do a lot of practices. So um usually a few practices a day usually after that first practice of the day you're you're coming back you're not feeling good you go sit on the couch and i usually have a sprite and sit on the couch and and uh you got to work that g tolerance back up um most people have a resting g tolerance somewhere around 4g so you can pull 4g's and and you're not really hurting yourself in my air show sequence i pull nine and a half and i push uh almost negative six um so you got got to get those margins built back up. Uh, So it just takes time. You know, the human body wasn't really made um, to pull G's, but just like anything else, um, we can adapt to our environment and uh, expand that envelope. Nice. That's uh, that's really important, too, especially for anybody playing, like, sports and uh, doing other activities. Right. So um, whenever you fly, I was actually curious about this. How do you load your smoke oil? Is it different in other airplanes, or is it the same throughout other aircraft? Yeah. Uh, the extra is unique in that it uh, sucks it up. 
Uh, it's the cleanest way to put it in an airplane. You can't overfill it like you can in other airplanes. My first airshow airplane was a Pitts, and it had a uh, a tank uh, in the front seat, and it was pretty prone to getting overfilled because the smoke oil usually is a, a very clear liquid, and it's hard to tell the depth on that liquid. Um, but with the extra, we put it in a five-gallon bucket, and we have a tube that comes out. It's uh, just forward of the uh, left main landing gear and it sucks it up and then when it's full it turns itself off and we turn the battery switch off and we're good to go nice yeah. so is, is your button on the throttle or the side of the airplane yeah so there's two buttons for it there's a smoke arm switch which is on the panel uh, in front of me, which uh, before I taxi out and we do all of our pre-flight checks, that's usually in the on position there. And then on the throttle, I use my thumb to toggle the off and on switch for smoke. Nice. That's pretty cool. I love the smoke on the aircraft. Absolutely. It makes for good uh, really. photographs. Yep. Yeah, so are you coming to any West Coast shows this year or? We're not coming into any West Coast shows this year. Um, we are planning to do a tour there uh, in the next couple of years. Oh, wow. It's kind of one wow. of those things. Uh, crossing the uh, the Rockies is a it's a pretty far flight. Uh, usually, you want to leave the airplane over there for a few uh, shows at least, and then. Uh, but we're we're planning right now for the 2025 and 2026 season, and plan on doing uh, leaving the airplane out there and doing some shows, uh, multiple shows there. Oh wow. Uh, yeah, so have you done any West Coast shows before or not Not really? No, um, and it's one of those things where a lot of the air show performers, especially in the, the smaller aircraft, kind of stay on either side of the Rockies. Um, but it's something I've always wanted to do. Um, I, I fly jets as well, and I love flying over the Rockies. And I love being on the West Coast. I'm here in the, on the West Coast right now in, uh, in Napa, and it's a uh, – Oh, wow. It's a gorgeous – Gorgeous area, and I, I love it out here. And the the uh, the weather's unbeatable. Nice. So I currently actually have a few flight hours on me. I've flown a Piper Cherokee and a Cessna 150. Nice. Which one's your favorite? I love love the Cessna. Cessnas are pretty cool. Yeah. I do it out of Chino Airport in Chino, California. Yeah. That's a great place. At where like planes of fame yeah. is. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah it's a great uh, area. I'm really hoping to continue it just to get my private license and maybe become like a photographer in the Marines. Yeah, absolutely. Now, when you go fly so the that... 150 again, I want you to try something. It's, okay. I was a flight instructor. I still am a flight instructor, um, but I, uh, I've given up over 5,000 hours of, of uh, instruction time, dual given. What I used to teach my students, and it's a good way to um, learn how to fly the airplane um, correctly using your feet and your hands. But if you can do some, I want you to do, go out and do some turns 90 degrees without touching the yoke. So you, what you'll have to do is start by using your rudder to get the nose coming one way, and then you'll use the trim tab to keep your altitude. And then to roll back out, you can use your your other rudder to get rolled out on heading. So I want you to try that when you go out and see if you can oh, okay, yeah. master can that definitely. skill. I can do that. Yeah, thank you for that suggestion. Yeah. Well, cur currently the Cessna at Dubois Aviation out there, uh, the wing is currently broken because somebody rammed a golf cart into it. Oh, bummer. Yeah, so I'm like, dang, that yeah. sucks. So, yeah, I'm hoping they get it fixed. I was going to – I tried telling them to contact the – museum bone to see if they got any like wings in the boneyard that can fit on the Cessna I'm sure they made a lot of them yep they did so yeah. next question uh do you remember your first air show if so I what do. was it like I do it was uh 2012 in Denton Texas oh wow you there Your uh, your 
Mike's uh, muted. There we go. Sorry, I, uh, no, I set good. limits. I set limits on social media, and it just kicked off for the day. Um, oh. But uh, yeah, my first show was in Denton, Texas. Um, it was a. Uh, it was in May of 2012. I was flying to Pitts S2B. Um, a gorgeous day. I remember. I can remember the smell about that day. Um, Denton has a lot of asphalt, which is um, a lot hotter than concrete and especially grass. So there was a, there was a, it was hotter that day than it, it really felt because of that asphalt. Um, but I remember one of my favorite things about that show was I flew my performance and I flew well and it, it felt really good. And then uh, I got to watch the Harrier uh, fly and that was, it's always been one of my favorite acts is seeing the Harrier and, uh, you know, when they pour water to it and shoot out the smoke and, and, uh, it was a, it was a good day and a day that I'll remember forever. Oh, wow. That's an awesome story, man. So what was flying the pits like? Was the controls, uh, they're, they smooth or were they heavy? So, um, so I've flown three, um, airplanes mainly for competition and air shows. Um, I started out in the decathlon, which is a fantastic airplane to teach you um, the basics and get get your motor skills down so you can move on to other aircraft should you want to do that. So the jump from the decathlon to the pits was a, a pretty large leap um, and it felt like you had endless power in the, in the pits. Um, I love flying uh, the pits because it they do right right shoulder rolls just fantastic torque rolls are awesome in it um, and it it felt like I was going from a, a single speed bike to a 10 speed bike you know I was I was able to do everything a lot faster um, and then moving from the pits to the extra was um, was a huge leap as well you know the extra is this airplane that was it's well balanced um, the engineering on it is phenomenal. They they really it's it's the top tier aircraft and uh, it rolls beautifully. It does everything great. Um, the it makes you look a lot better than than uh, than you would in a pits or a uh, decathlon because it's it's a lot easier. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. The pits the pits is a really cool airplane. I've seen. A lot of people fly the pits, including uh, Anthony Oshinuga, if you know who that is. Yep. He flew at March Air Reserve Base out in Moreno Valley, California, last year for the SoCal Air Shows. He did really awesome. I loved uh, watching him fly. So I also interviewed him uh, last year, too. So it was, he was a great guy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Pitts is a great airplane. They're, uh, uh, Curtis Pitts built a really – fantastic airplane and and there's a lot of them out there and it's a um bang for the buck uh pits s1s i don't think you can beat it nope so uh next question is uh do you have a favorite maneuver you like to perform oh that's a good question um i have quite a few maneuvers that i really enjoy uh i do an endo flip um in the second half of my show that I, I enjoy because it's just end over end. Um, and it, it looks neat from the, uh, from the crowd standpoint. I love shoulder rolls. Um, not a lot of, of mono wing guys do shoulder rolls. I love shoulder rolls. They just, they're fun to fly and you're just flying it the whole time. Um, the, the wing is still flying the entire time. Unlike a tumble where you're unlocking everything all at the same time. But, uh, you know, if I'm going out and doing some warm-up maneuvers, I love doing avalanches, um, which is a loop with a snap roll right on top. It's just a fun way. You've got the wing loaded up, and you can unlock it real quick, and it rotates over. And it's a fun maneuver to show people when they're riding with you in, in the airplane because um, it's, uh, you, it's zero G. You're, you're almost just rotating around a, a center axis, and it's, it's – uh, fun maneuver for them to see so that's awesome i 
I love uh, that. That's pretty cool. So my favorite maneuver, I really love the uh, I love the endo tumble as well. It's a really cool maneuver. You get to see like what's happening. Yeah. Your perspective on on the ground and things like that. Yeah. So how long is a typical aerobatic routine? Um, is Can it be longer than 12 minutes or shorter than 12 minutes? Because a lot of them are 12 minutes, like exact. Yeah. Um, usually you'll get allotted 12 minutes of time, and that's from diving into the box. Um, most everyone does a first half of their show and the second half of your show. So when you're designing what you're wanting to do, you need to design something that you don't repeat maneuvers unless they're maneuvers for repositioning or things like that. Um, you don't want to do more than one break in your sequence because you're just killing time at that point. So you're mainly allotted about 12 minutes for your show time. You're flying anywhere between eight and 10 minutes of that. Um, you know, with, with today's technology and social media, a lot of people want entertainment a lot faster so um i would say that you'll you'll probably see more people flying uh, aerobatics for about eight and a half to nine minutes rather than 12 minutes so you start losing people at that 10 11 minute mark and and uh you know that's why shows they mix it up so they'll have you know a comedy act a aerobatic act a formation act you know solo ship military and then formation military um because they like to keep it exciting they like to keep it Keep it moving. Nice. I love the comedy acts, too. So Kent Peach does one of them, too. I don't know if you know about that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's a good bud. Yeah. Is he not going to be flying this year? Because John Melby said he's um, going to be taking a couple years off. Uh, you know, I haven't heard that. But, um, you know, Kent, he's, uh, he's a decorated pilot. He's got thousands and thousands of hours and just a – a phenomenal guy. Um, I haven't heard that he's taken the time off, but um, he, uh, if he did, he would, it would be well-deserved because he's, he's got so many hours and, and been doing it for so long. He's got to have been, been flying air shows for uh, 40 years or 30 years. It's, it's a long time. Yeah. And I tried to get him on the podcast, but he never uh, responded. So he's not a technology guy. Um, you know, he's, he is the, the old old school uh he wants the entertainment live and and he wants to interact um but uh you know keep on him hopefully uh hopefully he'll respond and and get back to you cuz he's he's a wealth of knowledge um you know within the industry you have guys like him uh and his brother that just the the they will forget more in one day than I'll ever know in my entire life they're they're that that deep in knowledge uh, within aviation. It's, it's a lot of fun to hang out with those guys and, and kind of pick their brain and just listen to them. Cause they'll Kent doesn't talk a lot, but when he does talk, it's, it's, uh, it's usually meaningful. So yeah, it's a really, really great. Uh, he's a really great performer. I, I saw him a lot. So there's a couple people who's still in here. Okay. So we have a question from uh, bison aviation. He says, what is Adam's all-time favorite aircraft to fly? Aerobatic, casual, etc. Ooh, all-time favorite. Um, I I fly helicopters too. I love helicopters. They're a lot of fun. Um, I love the extra. Uh, it's it's a hard. It depends the day, right? So, um, I fly a lot of different things. It depends the mood that I'm in that day. But if I'm, uh, say. Sunday morning cruising with the with a friend. I, I want to go cruise in the in a helicopter or a cub or something like that. Um, if it's at an air show, I want to be in the extra. I love I love flying the extra. Um, if I'm going on vacation, I want to be in a uh, Challenger 300 or a CJ4 or something like that. And uh, but it, it depends the day, I guess. Nice. Yeah. Same here. Wait. Okay, never mind. Sorry. The the question thing is all weird because it shows the questions but not the people who type ah, them in. So sure. it, was all, it was all I had to kind of guess from memory. So Yeah. Yeah. So 
Do you have any family members that served in the military? No, well, I do. Um, my both grandfathers um, were uh, in the military. My uh, mother's side, he was a uh, bombardier on the B twenty four. Pretty, pretty awesome. decorated. And uh, I actually just took possession of all of his medals, and I'm going to make a, a big plaque of his uh, uh, bombardier uh, class picture and then all his medals going to put all that together um, my other grandfather was in the navy and he was uh, on one of the ships that was sunk in the um, near asia um, i can't remember the specific island that it was at but he was one of the guys that floated in the water for a uh a long time um oh and, wow and then my my uncle was um he fought in Vietnam and uh, was in the uh, army. Wow. Well, I thank them all. I thank them all for their service. Yeah. Uh, yeah. My grand, uh, my grandpa served in the army uh, and my dad served in the Marines. Nice. Uh, Aiden, can you type the question in again? Because I don't see it. Aiden KQ says, I, I, uh, did you see a question that popped up or no? Um, I did. Uh, which, which one is it? Uh, where is the thing? Sorry, I don't mean to. I'm sorry. I, I was trying to see what because I can't. It won't let me do the thing. It won't. Is it what it's like to what is it what is it like flying next to the Blue Angels? Is that is that the one? Is he still in here? Or is he out? Uh, oh, I can hit, I can hit that question. Um, you know, if if you're still looking for the other one. Oh, flying next to the Blue Angels is um, it's phenomenal. It's uh. Oh. Wait. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, hold on, hold on. Sorry to cut. Oh. Uh, is, what was it like flying aerobatics in the extra? What's what's it like? Sorry about that, Aiden. Oh, say that one again. What was it like flying aerobatics in the extra? So, my I think my earbuds were kicking off and on. <clears throat> the uh, air flying aerobatics in the extra is it is um, it's a workout. Um, you are doing something with an airplane. You're, uh, you know, the extra is built to uh, very high limits, and and they are absolute tanks. Um, you can't, you can't break an extra. Uh, you'll hurt yourself before you do that. Um, but the the extra, it's everything you want. Um, it's fast roll rate, tons of power, tons of vertical. Um, the roll rate's phenomenal. It stops on a dime on your rolls. Um, it's a workout. So uh, years ago, I wore a heart monitor when I flew and uh, at a show called the, the Sundance Air Show, the Discovery Air Show in Oklahoma City. And uh, I believe there's a video online of that, but it's a workout. You know, my heart rate is up uh, pretty high the entire time. Um, you're managing a few things. So when you're building your sequence, um, you have to realize that sometimes you're doing a lot of positive G's and sometimes you're doing a lot of negative G's and having them going back and forth real quick is shifting blood real quickly through your body, which um, can make you um, get a little headed. So uh, when I fly the red line guys um, in that act, um, Ken will come by, we'll do um, opposing entries. So we'll come in and he goes straight to pull up. I do a really big loop. When I get to the top of that loop, I usually have to push a little bit. And then Ken comes back through and I join him while we do two loops. So usually the first loop, I can't quite catch him because I'm, I'm chasing him at that point. And the extra um, has more power, but the RV-8 is a little bit slicker of an airplane. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. Yeah. it's the um, so. So when I'm coming from that high point inverted with um, a little bit of uh, 
negative G, negative one, just holding it there for a second. And then I do two positive loops at a very high airspeed, holding G on my body for a while. That's, that's one of the ones where I, I have to prepare my body when I'm coming down to really make sure I flex my legs and my abs to try to hold that blood uh, up in my head. Um, wow. And it's a, it's a really cool entry. Um, it took a long time to figure out the timing and how to get it, get it right. The it's, it's and that's the part of uh, and especially with people you design new things. So that's cool, man. I love that. The RV eight's actually really cool. I've never actually flown in one. I've seen one fly, but I've never actually like flown in one. It's a really cool airplane. They're they're fantastic airplanes. And um, when Ken was looking for a partner um, years ago. I was training with him in another RV8, and I said, you know, I think we have something here that will really be neat for the RV community and for the airshow industry. Um, I've always loved dissimilar. I, all my airplanes schemes have been asymmetrical and different than the standard airshow schemes. Um, so when we put the, the red line act together uh, with the extra, it was cool because it, it showed that the RV is an absolutely capable aircraft. Um, it can reach speeds the same as the extra. Um, and they built it to, to be this multi-role airplane. Um, it, it can't do a lot of things the extra can do, like tumbles, and, and it's limited on more limited on Gs and things like that. So um, it's fun interacting with another airplane that's dissimilar so you can show the capabilities of the airplane and and then pop out and do some solo maneuvers and show off uh what the extra is really good at nice that's awesome man that's yeah. really cool I, I love extra is actually my favorite um aerobatic airplane nice yeah they've been doing it a while and they 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 build just really uh nice well-built uh machines Awesome. There's actually an aerobatic, uh, pl uh, ca it's kind of a tourist attraction. I'm s it's like seven minutes from where I'm sitting. It's called Sky Combat Ace. You heard yep. of it? Yep, they have extras. Yeah, so I've been need needing to do that for a while. It's on my bucket list. Where there's one where you can fly the airplane. It's called the Afterburner, and they teach you how to fly the aerobatics. Yeah, I really, nice. I really want to do that. That would be really, really cool. Yep. That'd be fun. You yeah. should try it. I will. One of these days, my birthday's actually in uh, five, uh, six days. Nice. nice. Well, happy early birthday. Thank you, sir. Thank very much for that. So somebody wants to join the video, if that's fine with you. Sure. I accept that it should let in in a sec. Gillespie. Field Airport is so oh, okay. Easy. What's hey up, guys. man? How are you doing? Hey, how you doing? pretty good. Going pretty good. Nice. Uh, how you doing? I'm doing pretty good. How's it going for you two? Good. good. It's good. So, uh, did you want to ask him something or no? Nah, I was just gonna tell him though that uh, I saw him a couple times in 2019. I saw you at Rochester and I saw you at Pensacola. I still found you a picture of you and I on my phone from when I was nine years old. Oh, nice. Yeah, I'll have to send it to you. Rochester and Pensacola, huh? Oh, yeah. That's, uh, they're pretty far oh, apart. Oh, yeah. I'm from Buffalo, so we were just down in uh, Orlando because we were visiting family, and we found out that the week after was uh, the Pensacola Air Show. So we're like, oh, why don't we just go there? Like, you know what I mean? Great. Nice. Great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. Well, I'm currently sitting in San Diego right now visiting family, and MCAS Miramar is close to um, where I'm sitting. It's uh, 13 miles from where I'm sitting. Mm-hmm. So, oh, nice. yeah, I went, to the, I went to the air show last year, actually, and um, I um, was on – I was interviewed for ABC 10 News, if you didn't know that, Adam. Mm. Nice. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Yeah, thank you. Nice. Thanks for uh, the follow, Peter Aviation. So, uh, yeah, so, so ne next year, let's skip over. So, I have a, what is the best aviation advice you've ever received? 
Ooh, the best aviation advice. Um, you know, probably from several guys. Um, yeah. You got to find out what you like and what you don't like. So um, through my aviation career, I've I've tested almost all the waters and uh, and and found there's so many facets to aviation. You know, you can be an air show pilot, you can be a cargo pilot, you can be a firefighter, you can be a uh, airline pilot, um, you know, find, find what makes you happy. You know, there's, there's going to be something that's tap that's great for, for a lot of people. It may not be, um, exactly what you want to do, but, uh, each person's different and do what makes you happy. Cause then it won't feel like you're going into work. Uh, it'll feel like you're, you're, it's part of your life at that point. Um, and, and you can enjoy it more, get more out of it. It means, and you'll put more into it. So find find what makes you happy and do that. Cause life's short and uh, and it's fun, you know. Aviation yep. is a fun place to be and and uh, enjoy it. Awesome, man! Thanks for that. And then, uh, what advice would you give to future uh, aviators like myself here? Sure. Uh, try and, to be uh, the best. Be the best at what you do. You know. Um, be high energy. You're already doing it right now with your podcast and, and your your social media. Um, be high energy. Be somebody that when you show up, say, "Hey, how can I help? What can I do?" Um, and and it's it's more fun. You're gonna learn that way, and you're you're gonna be a, a lot. You're task oriented people um, that are high performers really all do well in aviation and. Uh, you know, it's a it's a really small world, so get to know as many people as you can. They, you may not use them now, but in 10, 15, 20 years, you, you might need an opportunity, and you, they might help you with an opportunity or or the other way around. So um, be kind to everyone and work hard and, and do your best. Thank, wow. thank you, sir. That's really, really great advice. I appreciate that. And. Uh, work, last thing is uh, where can viewers go to learn more about your performances? Sure. You can go to adambakerairshows.com um, or on YouTube. Um, one thing we're focusing more on this year is we're going to be putting some more content up. Um, I'm also on Instagram and, and Facebook, obviously. Um, but we're going to put more personal content on there. I want to show some more of the, the day-to-day tasks uh, of what we do. Um, a lot of times it's just a posting of the flying at air shows, but, uh, you know, there's a lot of behind the scenes side to that. Um, one of the reasons I love flying air shows is, is kind of to your, your point, your picture on your, uh, on your profile is you're sitting there with Sean D Tucker, which is, oh, uh, yeah, he's, I love that man. Yeah. yeah he's, he's amazing. Awesome. He is one of the reasons the, probably the main reason I got into flying air shows, um, I didn't get to meet him at an air show that I saw him flying at in Oklahoma City uh, years ago, but uh, I was watching him and he was flipping end over end and he was doing a hover in the Oracle Challenger and I said, I thought, wow, wouldn't that be cool to get to do that for a living? And and you know, just like your picture, one of my favorite things to do is walk the line and and meet everybody and it's a it's a community event. It air shows to me are a step back in time. Um, to where you really get to interact and be with people and see, you know, warbirds and, and aviation is a special place that we get to enjoy together. And, and it's a, it's a community. So, um, you know, it, that, that picture with you and, and Sean D obviously means a lot because you have it on your profile picture and, and, uh, you know, that inspires you to, you know, keep going after your goals and grow your podcast and all those things. And, Hey, that's a win for everybody. And he got to meet you and I'm sure he was uh, super excited to do that. And, and that's what I love doing at shows is, is getting to meet people and chat with them about where they're going in aviation, what they want to do. Yeah, it's, that's really great too. And I, I always love the advice he gave. Um, the advice he gave is super important and super helpful. So Sean, if you're listening, I just wanted to say thank you for uh, all the advice you gave me and talking to me at, planes of fame air show over the years and uh yeah i hope we can uh, uh chat again soon and meet up yeah sean is awesome like i met him in cleveland in 2016 
I think it was 2016. But yeah, I was like a young, I was like a young guy, and I still remember that day. Nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So believe it or not, I was actually the first time I saw him fly in 2012. I was really nervous to go up to him and talk to him, but now look at me. I'm yeah. not no longer scared anymore. Well, every everybody just you know everybody's a an aviation nut within the airshow world. You won't find the guys that that aren't deeply in love with aviation and want to share it. So um, never be afraid to go to talk to that person you saw fly, and and uh, they they love to get to know you as much as you want to get to know them. So, yep. All right. Does anybody else uh, have questions for Adam? So we got a few more minutes left. Oh, by the way, Adam, I sent you the picture of you and I in Pensacola. I don't know if you got it. Oh, I'll I'll check when I get off get off here. All right. Oh, there is new new airlines at Seattle International Airport. Starlux Airlines, Airbus A three fifty dash nine hundred from Tapey Seattle Star Service August seventeenth and China Airlines A three fifty nine hundred or seven or Boeing triple seven. 300 ER from Philippines there. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, by the way, uh, Adam, did you release your 2024 schedule? We're getting ready to put it uh, put it out on the website, and we'll post it on Instagram. But uh, coming up uh, in two weeks is going to be – I'm sorry, one week – is the uh, Cowtown Air Show in Fort Worth at uh, oh, yeah. NASJRB Fort Worth. Yeah. Are you going to go to, like, the Dayton Air Show this year? Uh, I'm not coming out to Dayton this year. Uh, oh. This year we'll be kind of in the uh, south, southeast portion of the country. Oh. Um, but next year um, we have some big things coming up uh, middle part of this year. Um, we are unveiling the three ship act for Redline, which will be really neat. Um, it'll be the first time oh, Redline has wow. ever done that. Uh, I'll wow. be flying lead, and uh, Ken Reader and Austin Reader will be on my wing, and we have a really neat show coming up. So, look forward to that in uh, July, mid July, at the Pensacola Beach Air Show. Wow! Nice. Are you going to go to Wings Over Batavia with them too? Uh, not this year. We're, we'll probably be expanding the Three Ship Act next year uh, to more shows. Uh, this year we're going to run it three times. Oh. And, uh, yep. Yeah, because I'm going to see Red Line only this year at Wings Over Batavia. So. Yep. Yeah. Oh, it's Batavia. That's how you say it. Yeah, Batavia. I always thought it was – I thought it, I always thought it was Batava. Bottom. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. That's how I always pronounced it when I was younger, but then I found out that it was Batavia. Nice. So. Nice. Yeah. What's that show like? Oh, I've never it's, been a, there. it's a great show. It's like a mini Oshkosh, pretty much. Like, it'll start, like, in the evening around, like, 5, and then it goes all the way to 9 o'clock. And then they'll do oh. – they'll end it off with a fireworks show, and it'll be with, like – um. Ken Reader will be flying it, Nathan Hammond, and it's literally so beautiful. Nice. Like, I it's a great show. 10 I never... out of 10 recommend going to that show. Nice. Hopefully, uh, fingers crossed, maybe one of these days. Oh, yeah. It's going to be Labor Day weekend, August 31st and September 1st. Nice. Adam Baker, are you going to uh, Sun and Fun? I will be at Sun and Fun Monday and Tuesday uh, signing autographs at the uh, Concord uh, booth, the Champion booth, and the Hartzell booth. Nice, man. That's going to be a good show. Sun and Fun's always awesome. Yep. Good time. Yeah, yeah so hopefully uh, maybe one of these days. I, I unfortunately live in the, uh, the, the the West Coast, so my, my – um, from one – Adam Baker to another. I'll see you there. Ah, nice. Yeah. Yeah. So if anybody doesn't have any questions, uh, we're going to go ahead and wrap it up. Thank you so much, sir, for coming on today, man. I hey. really appreciate you. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Yeah, no problem, man. So we'll see you next time, Adam. All right. Take see care. You. Hey, Adam. See ya. Bye. Right, bye-bye.